Welcome to Pavinars, webinars for the pavement community. My name is Andrew Bram, and today I'm going to talk about a comparison of lab produced asphalt emulsions by manufacturing equipment types. And as you can see here, we have an inline mill in the upper left hand corner, a high speed shear mixer in the lower left hand corner, and a recirculating mill on the right. And these are the three types of lab scale manufacturing equipment we use to produce asphalt emulsion. This presentation is based on a spring 2024 graduate course semester long project for manufacturing of asphalt emulsions. And I'm very happy to be a part of this group, the Roadhogs Research Group from left to right is Tolu, Tahir, Amarji, Tanner, Jackson, and Anik. They were the primary data collectors, data analyzers, and creators of this paper. And then I'd also like to thank Mr. Joey Island, our scientific research technologist, for all of his help during the spring 2024 semester. And I was simply along for the ride, enjoying the show and enjoying the manufacturing of asphalt emulsion. Just so everyone's on the same page, an asphalt emulsion is small particles of asphalt binder that are suspended in water. And the asphalt binder cannot be dissolved or mixed into the water, but it is suspended in the water with the help of emulsifiers. And asphalt emulsions are used in various pavement maintenance treatments, which you can see listed there, everything from fog seals and rejuvenating fog seals to chip seals, microsurfacing, cape seals, and ultra-thin bonded wearing courses. They're also used in rehabilitation treatments, hot in place recycling, cold in place recycling, cold central plant recycling, which is an in-place rehabilitation treatment, but it is an option, and full depth reclamation. And then also tack coats, prime coats, base stabilization, and soil stabilization. So how do we make asphalt emulsion? How is it manufactured? Well, there are two fundamental parts to manufacturing asphalt emulsion. And this is either at a plant scale or in the lab. First, you need mechanical energy. And this is provided by a piece of equipment, either a mill or a high speed shear mixer. And what this does is it divides the asphalt binder into fine particles. Common types of mills are colloid mills, and these can be disc, cylindrical, or conical. Colloid mills have a rotor, which rotates, and a stator, which is fixed and they have some sort of texture or teeth to them. And some key parameters are the speed of the rotor and the gap between the rotor and the stator in a colloid mill. And this all impacts the quality of asphalt emulsion that you're making. Now, in addition to having this mechanical energy, which divides the asphalt binder into fine particles, you also have a physiochemical energy. And this is provided by the emulsifier, which we add in the soap solution. And what the emulsifier in the soap solution does is it reduces the interfacial tension between the asphalt binder and the water, and it creates a protective film around the asphalt binder. And so these emulsifier molecules surround the asphalt binder droplets that were divided into fine particles through the mechanical energy and I think of them as lightly charged magnets. And so when you try and push two lightly charged magnets together, they push apart, they repel each other. And this is what the emulsifiers on the surface of the asphalt binder droplets do, which allows the asphalt binder droplets to stay suspended in water. Now, what types of lab scale manufacturing equipment did we use in this study? Well, we used a high speed shear mixer and basically you have some sort of container with a mixing assembly in that container and that's hooked to a motor. We place that mixing assembly or the mixing head about a quarter inch above the base of the container. We started the motor at about 1200 RPMs. We added asphalt binder to the soap solution, which was already in the container. And we increased to about 3000 RPMs. And we mixed until the emulsion was quote, homogeneous, which is somewhat subjective, but we did not mix for more than three minutes. The second type is a recirculating colloid mill. And here you can see a schematic on the left where the material can go up through the recirculating pipe 
into the hopper, then into the rotor and stator. Then it can recirculate around or the drain valve can be turned and you can take your sample out of the bottom. So basically you first start circulating your soap, then you add the asphalt binder, you let it recirculate and you take your sample. Now the third type is an inline, inline colloid mill. So you can see the schematic on the left and the actual picture on the right. You have an asphalt binder hopper and that has a line that can recirculate. This helps you get a constant asphalt binder temperature. You also have a soap solution hopper. Now the hopper is actually just a, a big Pyrex container that we use, but the soap pump is in the lower left hand corner. And what you do is you start your soap solution going through the mill, you turn the mill on, and then you add the asphalt binder. So you start the soap, turn the mill on to 10,000 RPM, and then you add the asphalt binder. And the asphalt binder is already recirculating, so you just change that recirculating valve to go to the mill. Then the mill and the soap solution merge together, they go through the colloid mill, and you can take your sink. So our experimental matrix was there were six students in the class. And so we had three groups of two, which we label operator A, operator B, and operator C. And then we manufacture our asphalt emulsion. So you can see HS stands for high speed shear mixer. MS is a medium set emulsion. SS is a slow set emulsion. A 58 indicates a base PG58 minus 28 binder grade. And a 64 indicates a base PG64 minus 22 binder grade. And these are all anionic emulsions, but you can see that each group made three emulsions on the high speed shear mixer. And each group made three emulsions on the recirculating colloid mill and the inline colloid mill. So basically each group made nine total emulsions. Therefore, this study looked at 27 total emulsions. And then we tested for particle size, residue, store stability, viscosity, and sieve for each emulsion. And our main goal here, our main objective, was to compare these three different manufacturing devices, the high-speed shear mixer, the recirculating colloid mill, and the inline colloid mill, and the impact of having different operators making the emulsions on these mills, or high-speed shear mixer. The test a little more details for particle size. We used a laser diffraction particle size analyzer. For the sieve, we used what we call the simplified Ashto T59, which is where we poured 100 grams through number 20 sieve. For storage stability, again, another simplified Ashto T59 spec for seven days. But instead of using the big old 500 milliliter um, graduate cylinders, we used 125 grams in an Erlenmeyer flask. We used Ashto T382 for a paddle viscosity. And then for residue, because we weren't doing any further testing, there are a lot of different methods out there for collecting residues. And um, it, it really does impact the sample, the asphalt emulsion residue that you get, how you take the residue, whether it is a uh, distillation, what temperature the distillations run at, or one of the low temperature methods that have been developed. But we were just trying to find the residue so we just placed 50 grams in 150 degrees Celsius oven for 24 hours to measure the residue. So very high level results, the particle size for the medium set emulsion for the recirculating and inline mills, we were seeing a mean particle diameter or D50 of two to two and a half. For the SS high speed shear, they were greater than 20 microns. And then the rest, the other configurations were between five and 10 microns. So the vast majority of emulsions were below 10 microns for their uh, mean size, which is, is pretty decent. That's what you would expect. But that high speed shear, that, that had pretty big particle size for the slow set emulsion. For the amount of um, sieve retained on the number 20 sieve, the recirculating and inline emulsions were negligible. But for that high speed mixture, we saw a little bit more sieve, 0.25 to 0.6%. And the standard is 0.1%. Now we use that modified method, so we can't really follow the standard, but 0.25 to 0.6% is a high number. So that kind of raised some red flags for the high speed mixture. Then for storage stability, 
We found 6.7% for the recirculating mill, but it was significantly higher for the other two mills. And then for paddle viscosity, we saw 33 to 52 centipoise for all the emulsions, except the 58 minus 28 on the inline mill. That was at 92 centipoise. And then for residue, all of them were within 5%. Um, which is, is what we were looking for, except for the MS5828 on the inline, which was about 14% less than what was expected, which was quite a bit of surprise. Now, we also ran a Krutzko Wallace statistical analysis, and we found that for the manufacturing devices, there were significant effects for particle size, store stability, and viscosity. So, um, yes, we have different types of manufacturing devices in a lab setting, the high-speed recirculating mill, the, or excuse me, the um, high-speed shear mixer, the recirculating mill, and the inline mill, but you saw it, see that here, you do get statistically different numbers for particle size, storage stability, and viscosity. So at the end of the day, more research is needed, but this is a very, very nice little study that looked at three different types of manufacturing devices with three different groups, and then these five tests to test three different types of emulsions. Now, I went through this pretty quickly. I really encourage you to look at the full paper. There's a lot more very good details in there. And emulsions, as I mentioned, they're used for a lot of things. You can see a chip seal being sprayed up on top. You can see some emulsion being sprayed into the uh, mixer in a hot and place recycling job there on the bottom. So lots of good uses. And there is a link to the DOI that can be found in the description below. But I really appreciate you joining me today and I hope you have a wonderful day.